Good morning. I'm Paula Ann Porter Jones. These are the latest stories from the Radio Jamaica News Center. Democrat Joe Biden is pushing closer to the 270 electoral college votes needed to carry the White House, securing victories in the Blue Wall battlegrounds of Wisconsin and Michigan and narrowing President Donald Trump's path. With just a handful of states still up for grabs, Mr. Trump has tried to press his case in court in some key swing states. It's unclear if any of his campaign's legal maneuvering over balloting would succeed in shifting the race in his favor. Two days after Election Day, neither candidate has amassed the votes needed to win the White House. But Mr. Biden's victories in the Great Lakes states has left him at 264, meaning he is one battleground state away from becoming president-elect. Mr. Trump, with 214 electoral votes, faces a much higher hurdle. To reach 270, he needs to claim all four remaining battlegrounds, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia and Nevada. Mr. Biden has already received more than 71 million votes, the most in history. At a news conference yesterday, the former vice president said he expected to win the presidency, but stopped short of outright declaring victory. And with tensions rising, about 200 of Mr. Trump's supporters, some armed with rifles and handguns, yesterday gathered outside an election office office in Phoenix, Arizona, following unsubstantiated rumors that votes were not being counted. In Detroit, officials blocked about 30 people, mostly Republicans, from entering a vote counting facility amid unfounded claims that the vote count in Michigan was fraudulent. Anti-Trump protesters in other cities demanded that vote counting continue. Police arrested 11 people and seized weapons in Portland, Oregon after reports of rioting, while arrests were also made in New York, Denver and Minneapolis. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has announced that the government may have to revise its estimates for the damage to the island's road network and infrastructure by the recent rains. While addressing a function in his constituency yesterday, Mr. Holness acknowledged that allocations had already been made for the damage previously done. But with more recent rains, a new challenge has emerged. Yes, the government is um, already mobilized. We have already made some allocations to do the immediate response. We are watching this new set of rains now very carefully. I'm I'm really hoping that it does not create any further damage than what was created a week or so ago. We will do another assessment uh, by next week and we will probably have to update our calculations that we made regarding uh, damage assessments and we may very well have to do further reallocations in our budget. And Mr. Thomas is not convinced giving Portmore Parish status would boost revenue for the municipality, as has been suggested by the local government minister. There is nothing that any other municipal cooperation in Jamaica is receiving from central government that we don't receive. We have been collecting property tax we receive percentage from what we collected, just like other parishes. We receive money from central government because one of the things is that we don't have our own autonomy. And that is something that I think needs to be done, that we need to separate ourselves from central government, that we can take care of our affairs. And if you are a parish, then the minister should be looking into that to, to say to the, the municipal cooperation, let us come together, look at the whole thing, and support ourselves from central government. And that is what is needed. Mayor of Portmore, Leon Thomas. Local government minister Desmond McKenzie on Tuesday moved a motion for establishment of a joint parliamentary committee to consider the matter of making Portmore a parish. Mr. McKenzie says Portmore already matches the population size of some parishes in Jamaica and it's fitting for it to have its own revenue stream and control. In the meantime, Mr. Thomas says there must be consultation within Portmore on it becoming a parish. We have some very strong groups in Portmore and we don't hear anything because this is news to me when I heard that the minister of tabled this in parliament. So we are waiting to hear from him and we also waiting to put our 
views forward because you cannot declare Portmore as a parish and we lack of several of these infrastructure development to make it to be a parish. Mayor of Portmore, Leon Thomas. Devon All Age School in Manchester, as well as Chalky Hill All Age and Monique Primary and Junior High in St. Anne, have been added to the list of schools that will participate in the two week face to face classes pilot program. They replace Troy High and Albert Town High in Trelawney, as well as Tranquility Primary and Infant School in Portland, with have, which have withdrawn from the program. A news release from the Education Ministry yesterday said, following Tuesday's consultation with principals, it approached three other schools to be part of the pilot program. The ministry says the other 14 schools which were initially selected have indicated they will be ready for the commencement of the pilot on Monday. And ahead of Monday's resumption of face-to-face classes at 17 schools, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is urging parents to keep ill children at home. Because if someone else's child is ill, it, the likelihood is that your child could get ill. So if you are ill yourself as a parent, if your child is ill, then you have to ensure that based upon the Disaster Risk Management Act and the orders in that act, that you don't send an ill child to school. And I use the term ill because if it is any flu-like symptoms, you should err on the side of caution and not send that child to school, get medical attention before you venture. Prime Minister Andrew Holness. A 40-year-old lifeguard who on Monday allegedly pointed a gun at patrons in a bar in Hanover has been taken into custody. It was reported that the man was at the bar in Davis Cove when he got into a dispute with a tour operator. Investigators reported that he left and returned with a gun. It's alleged that he pointed a weapon at the other patrons in a threatening manner. He was challenged by a licensed gun holder who opened fire at him. The lifeguard fled. He was arrested when he turned up at the Green Island police station with a bullet wound to the leg. And the Electoral Office of Jamaica, EOJ, says all Election Day workers should be paid by this weekend. The 67,000 workers were scheduled to receive payment last month. In an update to Radio Jamaica News, Director of Elections Glassbull Brown said 70% of the employees have so far been paid. At today's date, a number of our workers have been paid. Certainly, a significant amount of the, what we call the one-day policemen, the presiding officers, the poor clerks, the um, sanitizers, etc. Um, I would, based on premier data that I've got, in excess of 70% have been paid. We are fairly advanced with the payment of the supervisors, and we anticipate that by this weekend, a large amount of our workers would have been paid. A number of technicians were paid today, based on what, what I've seen and what I got from the accounts department and none of them are paid today. Director of Elections, Glassbull Brown. And those are the stories from the Radio Jamaica News Desk at this time. We now head to the streets. Courtesy of ICWI, serving you is all they do. Derek Wilkes. Morning again, Paula, and thank you so much. A traffic building now along Linders Road, Beachford Avenue, and Halfway Tree Road. Maxfield Avenue also quite busy into the Halfway Tree area where the steady traffic movement in and around the square. Steady movement too along Hagler Park Road, Hope Road, and Malines Road at this time, but still no delays to anticipate. Now the Omara Road, Hagler Park Road intersection remains a challenging corner to navigate, with that being a very popular and heavily used area with Omara connecting to Chisholm Avenue, which is out to both Maxfield Avenue and Waltham Park Road, both of which are also very active at this time. Paula, back to you. Thank you, Derek.